Hey, welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus, chapter 12, and today we're looking at just two verses again, verses 7 and 8. Let's read. Moreover, they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that same night, roasted with fire, and they shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Now, I want you to notice here, we're looking at the requirements for the Passover. It was not enough for an animal to be selected. It was not enough for that animal that was selected to be slain. It was not enough to just say, this is our sacrifice. No, the animal had to be selected. It had to be slain. Then the blood had to be collected and the blood had to be applied. And it wasn't God's plan for it just to be applied however any person just wanted it. It had to be applied in the very way that God instructed that it be applied. So according to God's instruction, there's a, on either side of the door entrance, the blood had to be applied, and then on the, on the bar over the top of the door, it had to be applied there on all three of those surfaces. Not two of them, not one of them, but exactly on those three surfaces. And you know, we're not really told exactly why on those three surfaces, but I do know this. The family lives inside the home. Outside the home was Egypt. Inside the home, it was a home, if it was a home of faith, it should be a home of faith in Yahweh, faith in Jehovah. Inside the home should be a people who are living according to faith in the God of the Hebrews. And so that door marked sort of the, the difference between the mission field outside the home and the mission field inside the home. Outside was Egypt and inside should be God's kingdom. Some of us have an awful lot of Egypt inside through the doors of our home, all the way into our pockets. But back here to this sacrifice in the blood, the blood had to be applied. How would it be applied? Applied by, by a human agent. And that human agent would be the father, the priest of the household, the male spiritual leader of the household. He would apply that blood and it also had to be applied before midnight. So there's lots of particulars here that you can't really go around here. God has a very particular set of business going on here. Now, I want you to notice also that the sacrifice had to be eaten that very night, you know, and before the death angel comes by. It's to be prepared for eating in a certain manner, the simplest, most straightforward manner. Don't have to go get a bunch of water, boil up the water, and do all this and do all that. This was the simplest uh, way to, uh, to prepare the animal so it could be cooked right away. Everything's happening kind of in, they don't have microwaves, but it's everything is happening in the fastest way. Because remember, they're getting ready to leave Egypt rapidly. And so this is all symbolically entwined in this. Notice again, and there would be no time for the bread to rise. They don't have any leaven in the bread, so they're going to prepare this flat bread very quickly. And they also are going to eat with bitter herbs. And all these exact instructions tell us that the event is laden with a lot of significance all over the place. And we'll say more about it as we work our way through. So once the door is marked and the people are inside, the people are, in effect, under the seal of God, we might say. Look at what verse 13 says. I know we're jumping ahead, but verse 13 says, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. So God will see the visible sign of their faithfulness and he will pass over them. When in the book of Revelation, the unfaithful receive the mark of the beast, remember that in chapter 13? At the same time, God's people will have already received the seal of God and they're going to be protected in that time. I hope you see the obvious <laughs> parallel. Uh, there's obvious parallels here between the Passover and the mark of the beast and the seal of God. There's obvious parallel here between the Passover and the seal of God and not being under the Passover sacrifice and having the mark of the beast. You see the interesting parallel. So if you're under the blood there, you're marked, so to speak, for life, for God. And if you're not under the blood, you're marked for death. And if you're one of the firstborn of Egypt, that was exactly what the parameters were. All the firstborn of Egypt would die that night. If you weren't under the blood, you would die that night. Why? Because those without blood on the doorposts are marked for death by the absence of God's chosen sacrifice. By the way, no uh, full-blown Egyptian person would do such a thing. Take, take a lamb and, and wipe the blood on the, on the overhead and on either side of the door. No Egyptian is going to do that. Uh, that is something, remember, that's an abomination to the Egyptians. So this is really a separating piece. God is really putting a clear separation here between his people and the Egyptians. People of faith and people that are not uh, exercising faith in Yahweh. So there's really two groups here. Those who live in obedience 
and who believe, and those who live in disobedience and do not believe. Romans 6 verse 16 says, you are the servants of the one that you obey. And here at Passover, we're finding out who obeys the God of the Hebrews and who doesn't. So those who are under the protection of God in the Passover, they have a visible outward sign demonstration of their obedience to God. All right, we'll leave it there and come back at the next verse tomorrow morning as we're looking at the Passover. God bless you.